Hi, this is Dr. Duncan. And what I'm doing today is I am going to do a sample a literary analysis of our diagnostic essay that we uh, story that we started with um, before we had our study here at the now I'm doing it now at the end with the tools that you have learned and to kind of guide you through how to approach uh, your final exam essay. You'll be given a short flash fiction, that's what we call these very, very short stories. Um, and then in the time you have to read it and you've got to quickly analyze it. There's always an emphasis on theme, which is what does this mean more than just what happened? What is that message or truth about life that uh, might be true for all of us that this um, author has used this story to tell us? And uh, there are a couple of things. So uh, what are the tools we learned? We learned conflict analysis. And in that really key is identifying, first of all, your main character, your protagonist. You try to identify the antagonist. First, look to see if there's a character that gets in their way. If not, then you look at uh, other external things first, like uh, what's going on in their environment. Is it a natural event, something in nature? Like, are they going up against the weather, uh, a tornado, or something like that? What's in their environment? Is it society in general, them against the world? You know, kind of like Hunger Games, you know, for the gal in there she's she's in conflict not just with the leader of that group um, but all of the all of how society is um, set up and structured um, so you're looking for that you do look at internal uh, conflicts but those in a short story are going to be uh, sec I mean or all, and even in a long story you look at the external main conflict first and then to see what's driving it you look at the internal conflicts um, then you determine what is that conflict over? Uh, and what does it rep possibly represent for, for uh, the rest of us, you know, who aren't experiencing the same um, sort of set of circumstances, but maybe the same challenge in a different way with a person, with an environment, with society, uh, something like that. Okay, you, you pick those things out and you kind of track where did, what kicked off the um, conflict, where did it peak out and come to a head and be the where the fight really happened? That's the climactic moment. It has the most emotional intensity. And then there's an after effect. There's a, there's a, a resolution. Um, there's a consequence. There's, a, there's something there. So even though this is super short, it follows that. Uh, we'll do this in a second. The next tool we learned was character analysis. So you've identified uh, your characters usually in a you know, a short story, you might have two or three that are named um, and have a role in a short, short like this one, maybe just one or two. We have two named characters in here. So uh, we just focus on those named characters and go through. And of course, we've already identified if they fit into the role, one of them will, protagonist, if, if any of them are the antagonist. Um, then you kind of look and go, okay, do we have any minor characters? But let's focus on the major named characters. And the other things, um, we look and go, okay, protagonist in particular, are you, um, to what degree are you round and complex versus uh, flat? Now, here's a trick key. If they're the major focus protagonist, they're not going to be flat. Um, that is just a given, like they're going to be complex. Now, in a short, short story like this, obviously the complexity is not as much as if it were a novel but if you know what that character is thinking and why they're doing what they're doing that's enough to cons be considered a round complex character the other key um either or in character analysis especially for a major character is are they dynamic or static do they undergo a change, a significant change, not just normal life we grow up and, you know, we have a change, in it, but a significant change. It can be external, but mostly it's internal. Maybe it's an understanding, it's an awareness, but we see the change um, happen to them, okay? Static means in spite of whatever they go through in this story, they still are kind of the same. They, they persevere, they stay uh, true, kind of like, um, well, on uh, 
Phoenix on a well, worn path. You know, she went through a lot, but she was still just as the same at the end as she was at the beginning, in spite of all the adversity. So let's just take a quick look here. Oh, 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 and then symbols, sorry, symbols. When something in the story means more than what it is literally. We have all of this in this very short story. So as we know, um, we have a little bit of background and conflict analysis, the exposition. She tells about it being her first year in New York. She's going to Catholic school. She describes the sisters there, the nuns, and how she really, really likes Sister Zoe, her grandmother, late fourth grade teacher, school description, and how she puts her in, um, Sister Zoe puts her in a special seat by the window so that she could be tutored. And then she says she enunciates the new words I was to repeat. Laundromat, cornflakes, subway, snow. That should be a bing, bing, bing. Now, every story won't do this, but it is a clue. We had it repeated uh, when the title is repeated in the story. That is a clue. Uh, the title of the story is Snow. Snow is the first, is the last word of the first paragraph. Okay. We come back and we look and it's repeated again right at the end. When Sister Zoe says, why you want to do that snow? And it's repeated three words later. She laughed. Snow. Snow. I repeated. There it is. Three times in a row. I looked and I saw them. And then she says something again. Each flake, meaning snowflake, was different, Sister Zoe said. Like a person. Irreplaceable and beautiful. So that is a clue. Look at the title. Look at um, what is in the story with that name. So in our uh study we had everyday use and then we saw that word repeated and it was referring to those artifacts and it was specifically referring to those quilts the quilts and it was d's objection she'll maggie will use those for everyday use which in d's mind was not appropriate um in a worn path it's the pathway of course that's through is the thread of the whole journey and uh, in a rocking horse winner, the rocking horse obviously being here, and then quarter the of course the irony of that the winner he won the races, but then you know as uh, Uncle said, hey you won all this money but you lost your son, uh, so those titles are so important. Doll's House, you know the the Act Three that we focused on, um, how Nora has this epiphany she realizes that she's been treated like a doll she's a doll wife she was treated like a doll child by her father and then made a doll wife by, by her husband and lives in a doll house she's not treated like a real autonomous human being so these are really important all right let's take another quick look so we have our, our characters it's yolanda okay because we get that it's told in first person i uh yolanda telling her story now um, not the same as julia so there's two different names. So it means it's not autobiographical. It's from the point of view of Yolanda, her experience. And that builds up the uh, suspense and the uh, climactic moment, which, remember, is when the girls are shrieking. Well, because <laughs> Yolanda looks at the stuff falling out of the sky, and she's from the Dominican Republic. At least we know she's not from New York. It's her first year, and she's having to learn English, right? So she's from somewhere else. And... She doesn't know what snow is, and everybody thinks it's the bomb because she shrieks bomb, and of course it really isn't, but that's that climactic moment. And then the after effect comment is, hey, don't be afraid, it's snow, and what can we learn from this? Not just to not be afraid of snow, but that each snowflake is different. Sister Zoe had what we called a teachable moment and said she, it's like a person, irreplaceable and beautiful. All right, so there's our sort of our conflict analysis. Our protagonist is Yolanda. We know why she misunderstood. We know her background, who she likes, her experience. Everything's from her point of view. Um, and that isn't always the protagonist. It is the case in everyday use, but it's not automatic if you uh, that the narrator is the protagonist. No. Um, in The Great Gatsby, for example, the, the storyteller, the narrator is a character, but he's not the protagonist Gatsby is, okay? But in this case, it's the same. And then you have um, a named character, Sister Zoe, who speaks a couple of times and interacts with her and uh, 
you know, you would analyze that, uh, but you would analyze Yolanda. Is she complex? Yes, because we know what she's thinking and why she's doing what she's doing. And um, not so much Sister Zoe, we just, she's kind of a, has a role to play. Uh, so she's not complex. Sister Zoe, we don't know why. We just know what Yolanda tells us. And um, it did, did uh, Yolanda change? We don't know. We don't get her response. We just get what was said at the end. So as far as we know, she's static. Potentially she changed. And this is kind of conversation you have in an explanation. Like you could assume that this changed her. Obviously it marked her and it's significant because she's telling her story, but she's not the focus. It's the idea of the message. That's the focus that she received from Sister Zoe that um, Julia Alvarez wrote this story to share with us okay, and connect with her audience. So there's a little bit of character analysis in there. Not clearly dynamic. We would hope that it is dynamic, but it's not revealed here. So as far as we know, it's static. Maybe she changed. Um, all right, what else? So symbol. So the, uh, the nice thing about short stories is they're going to be kind of simple. And if they have a symbol, it's going to be pretty clear, like the quilt. In this case, the snow, because it represents more than just what it is, white stuff falling, cold stuff falling out of the sky. That's a weather thing that happens, you know, in the cold, uh, up, and especially in the north. It's more than that. It means something. It means something. And Sister Zoe attached the meaning to it. And she did it with what we call a simile, using the word like for the comparison, and saying, hey, it represents something here. Instead of your negative association you thought it were it was a bomb no it represents a person totally different irreplaceable and beautiful and who was what was she trying to say to yolanda you might be different too you are different right now you don't know how to pronounce uh pronounce words you don't understand english you don't understand new york and and things but that's okay you are still irreplaceable and unique and beautiful you're not being set apart because you're weird. I'm going to help you through this whole transition because you're valuable. And that's the message. That's the theme of this whole thing, this whole little story. And some of you got parts of that, you know, at the beginning, many of you missed it. And this is just your little less than 15 minute tutorial on how you take a short story, apply the terms that we learned. Okay. And then use that as support for the what the theme message is which will be the focus all right of that and when you use those terms you have to explain your answer and you have to kind of bold it or underline it or something um in your text you've got to organize the next thing you have to do is organize your um essay okay and so use those an analysis uh terms like we've done as paragraphs um do a little, you know, start out in your little text box with just your little notes linked to that and the terms and then figure out the best way to organize them together so that you have three main body paragraphs, okay? And uh, you have a thesis that says kind of the thematic idea supported by what three that you pick, conflict analysis, character analysis, symbol analysis. There it is, built right in. Based on, you know, the theme of it is this, based on character analysis of, you know, uh, Yolanda or just Yolanda and Sister Zoe or just Yolanda, um, the, the oh, right. yeah, conflict uh, in the story, the character analysis and the symbol of snow, right? So that's, and you organize it and then you write that. The best thing you can do, of course, you know, you've got to get that outline of three main points and then um, develop those, okay? Develop those first, create your thesis with the theme as the focus, but connected to all three points, and then construct uh, an introduction. Now, you won't be able to give us any author background, so you don't do that. If you don't have the year it was written like this, you, you give us what we have, and you just kind of try to set up uh, the, the body and give us um, just something to connect us with, to the uh, storyline, that theme, how to try to engage our interest, and then go to a conclusion and connect uh, to yourself a little bit there. Like, what's this insight? How is this valuable to you? What does this tell you? 
I mean, because we all want to be know well, and think about this. There is something in it for all of us. It's what makes it literature instead of just a story. We all want to be uh, felt like, feel like we, and be told that we are valuable, irreplaceable, and beautiful. We all have different circumstances that, you know, kind of test that or challenge that um, and make that connection in there. The last thing is that you'll be asked to uh, provide a work citation. And remember that it's always appropriate to do very selected short um, quotations from the story to uh, to support that. And like on this one, you see a page number. And remember, put it in parentheses uh, at the end, you know, Alvarez 07. Now, I know it looks a little weird, but whatever that page for that, you know, portion of it, 86 or oh, it says 07. I know it doesn't make sense, but if you have page numbers, if you don't, you just, you know, you use what you have. You will be given more information in the test about how to, you know, it's kind of like a template to fill in to do that uh, for the work cited citation. So, um, yeah, review this. This is the best way to prepare. You'll have a different story, obviously. And of course, we're looking at how you approach it at the beginning versus at the end, but the, are you using the literary terms that we learned in our study? That is what we're testing you on. All right, I hope you find that very helpful and that you do uh, really great on the uh, final essay exam.